Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Brokoslav Leshovsky. I'm a postdoctoral fellow in the Temerty Faculty of Medicine at the University of Toronto and the Toronto Rehabilitation Institute. And uh, today I'm going to talk about our ongoing research in computer vision and deep learning for automated control of robotic leg prostheses and exoskeletons. Uh, but first, I just want to mention Science for Ukraine, which is an initiative that I helped develop to provide support to Ukrainian students and researchers that have been affected by the Russian invasion. Thus far, we've been able to register more than 2,200 research labs from over 100 countries worldwide who are willing to fully fund Ukrainian scholars to come and do research. And so if you're interested to learn more about that initiative, then please check out our website, scienceforukraine.eu. And uh, this initiative actually helped disseminate our U of T summer program for Ukrainian students. Here you see myself with several of the students, and this is hosted by the Department of Computer Science and the Vector Institute. And being Ukrainian-Canadian, I do take these initiatives personally, and so if you're interested in getting involved, I'd be more than happy to speak with you after my talk. So with that being said, uh, just to motivate my talk today, uh, there are currently hundreds of millions of individuals worldwide with mobility impairments due to conditions uh, such as Parkinson's disease, cerebral palsy, spinal cord injury, osteoarthritis, and most notably aging. There are also conditions like limb amputation, stroke, and MS, although I don't present data for those here. Now, fortunately, uh, robotic prosthetics can replace the propulsive function of the amputated biological legs and allow patients with amputation to perform daily locomotor activities that require power generation, for example, climbing stairs. There are also robotic exoskeletons, which act in parallel with the musculoskeletal system, and these devices can replace the propulsive function of weakened or impaired biological muscles due to aging and or physical disabilities. However, control of these robotic devices is extremely challenging. The majority of devices use some form of hierarchical control architecture, whereby the high-level controller is responsible for determining the patient's desired locomotion mode. Then, a mid-level controller uses some mathematical model to relate the locomotor activity to some desired reference trajectories. And finally, the low-level controller is responsible for tracking these reference trajectories using local closed-loop feedback control. Now, I specialize in high-level control of these devices. And so the state of the art in automated high level control uses sensors on the patient and or on the device. These data streams are then often fused together and some pattern recognition algorithm is then used to predict the desired local motion mode from some high level decision space. However, these sensors can only really estimate the current state of the system, which is somewhat analogous to walking blindfolded. Now, in theory, an environment recognition system consisting of a wearable camera and an image classification algorithm could be used to predict the oncoming walking environment prior to physical interactions, which can then improve the speed and accuracy of the locomotion mode predictions. And this has been the focus of our research. Now, a number of wearable camera systems have been used to sense the walking environment. However, 
the corresponding image classification algorithms, as shown here, have been limited to heuristics, statistical pattern recognition, or machine learning algorithms that require manual feature engineering, which can be both time-consuming and suboptimal. Now, in contrast, deep learning can replace these hand-designed features with multi-layer networks that can automatically and efficiently learn the optimal image features directly from training data. And this is the unique approach that we've taken. And so if you're interested to learn more about these different image classification algorithms, then please check out our 2020 BioRot paper. So our research objective over the years has been to develop accurate and robust environment recognition systems powered by computer vision and deep learning AI. And this is intended to improve the automated control and decision making of next generation robotic leg prosthetics and exoskeletons in rehabilitation medicine. So back in 2018, we designed our preliminary system using a chest mounted wearable camera as shown here in the video. This was used to collect images of indoor and outdoor real world walking environments. We then manually labeled approximately 34,000 images as either incline stairs, decline stairs, or level ground terrain. These wearable camera images then served as inputs to a custom design deep convolutional neural network used for image classification and the resulting multi-class confusion matrix showed that our preliminary system was able to achieve uh, approximately 95% overall prediction accuracy on this real-world visual data. Now, here are some interesting examples where our deep learning model misclassified the walking environment. The images in the top row were misclassified as incline stairs, presumably because of the horizontal line features throughout the image. The images in the middle row were misclassified as level ground terrain, and these examples nicely highlight the importance of accurate environment classification for safety, such that a misclassification could potentially cause a patient to fall down a flight of stairs. And finally, the miscellaneous images in the bottom row were misclassified as decline stairs. And so we presented this preliminary environment recognition system at the 2019 i conference, where we were able to establish the feasibility of using deep learning for this new computer vision application. Now, since then, a number of research labs have likewise used convolutional neural networks for image classification of walking environments. However, each of these deep learning models, including our uh, original system, were each trained and tested on different computer vision data sets, which makes direct comparisons between these different systems quite challenging. And so this motivated us to develop the open source large scale ExoNet dataset. Again, we used a wearable RGB camera to collect images of indoor and outdoor real world walking environments. However, this time we collected over 52 hours of video, which amounted to approximately 5.6 million images. And we uniquely collected these images across multiple seasons in order to take into account different weathered surfaces like snow, grass, and multicolored leaves. We then manually annotated these images using a 
uh, new hierarchical labeling architecture with 12 individual classes as shown here on the right. This included both steady and transition states and we manually labeled over 923,000 images using this new architecture. So here are some examples of both steady and transition states. The images in the top row show me walking with a robotic exoskeleton while wearing our computer vision system. And these are examples of steady states such that the visual field of view shows only continuous level ground terrain. And these visual fields of view are essentially what the exoskeleton sees. In contrast, the images in the bottom row are examples of transition states, such that the visual field of view shows a transition from level ground terrain to either incline stairs, as is on the left, or a bench on the right. Here's an overall breakdown of the environment classes in the Exonet dataset. And one thing I want to highlight with this slide is that the class distributions are not evenly balanced as visually shown in the pie graph, which is an issue in machine learning. However, these imbalances are representative of the real world and the frequency at which we interact with each of these environments. So presumably, such imbalances should be somehow represented in your classification system. Now, compared to other computer vision datasets for robotic prosthetic legs and exoskeletons, the Exonet dataset is actually one of the largest and most diverse datasets that has been developed and published to date. And this can be characterized by having significantly more images as well as more than double the number of individually labeled classes. And we also uploaded the Exonet dataset to IEEE Dataport, including the annotations, and made the dataset publicly available to the research community. And so if you're interested to learn more about Exonet, then please check out our Frontiers in Robotics and AI paper. Now, to provide a reference and benchmark for the research community, we then trained and tested over a dozen state-of-the-art deep convolutional neural networks, as shown on the right-hand side, on the Exonet dataset for image classification. Now, as an example, here is the resulting multi-class confusion matrix for one of those deep learning models during inference on the test set. Here, the columns and rows are the predicted and labeled classes, respectfully, and the diagonal elements are the prediction accuracies for each environment class. So for example, this deep learning model was able to predict transitions from decline stairs to level ground terrain with approximately 79% accuracy. And so if you're interested to learn more about this particular neural network and its performance, then please check out our 2021 EMBC paper. So the Exonet dataset also allowed us to perform one of the first large-scale comparative analyses between different deep learning models on a computer vision dataset specifically for robotic prosthetic legs and exoskeletons. And our analysis showed that the EfficientNet B0 network, which was developed by Google, was able to achieve one of the highest overall prediction accuracies. We also showed that VGG16 is able to achieve uh, the fastest inference time, which can be important for real-time control. And finally, our analysis showed that the 
mobile net v2 network which was also developed by google is able to achieve the best net score now net score is a new operational metric developed by one of my colleagues that uniquely balances the classification accuracy with the computational and memory storage requirements of the neural network which can be important for onboard real-time inference with mobile and embedded computing devices. And so if you're interested to learn more about this comparative analysis, then please check out our Frontiers in Neural Robotics paper. Now, despite our best efforts, we weren't able to achieve classification accuracies higher than approximately 73% on the Exonet dataset. And so this motivated us to take a more systematic approach and to break down the computer vision problem into smaller series of locomotor activities. And so we started with stair recognition because it presents one of the greatest safety risks to older adults and or rehabilitation patients. And we focused on four main environmental states, including level ground transition to incline stairs, uh, the next being steady state incline stairs, although I don't show that here just because of limitations in space, the third being incline stairs transition back to level ground, and finally, steady state level ground terrain. Now, building on the Exonet dataset, we designed a new computer vision dataset called StairNet, specifically for automated stair recognition. And we use new definitions for the class boundaries in order to separate different environmental states. We then trained and tested the mobile net v2 network on StairNet for image classification and our resulting multi-class confusion matrix showed that our system was able to achieve over 98% overall prediction accuracy on these complex real-world stair environments. We also recently uh, deployed our automated stair recognition system on a mobile device to show onboard real-time inference. And so here you see the system predicts level ground, then level ground to incline stairs, then steady state incline stairs. then incline stairs to level ground, steady state level ground, level ground to incline stairs, incline stairs to level ground, and then finally steady state level ground terrain. And all of this is done, as you can see, in real time with extremely high accuracy. And this is without even optimizing the system to leverage the onboard GPU. Now, compared to other vision-based automated stair recognition systems for robotic prosthetic legs and exoskeletons, the StairNet system was able to achieve one of the highest overall prediction accuracies, but on one of the largest data sets that has been published to date. And so this is indicative of its widespread generalization to many different real-world environments. Now, despite this robust performance, here are some interesting examples where our system misclassified the environment. The images in the top row were misclassified as level ground terrain transition to incline stairs, presumably because of the horizontal line features in the upper half of the images. 
The images in the middle row were misclassified as incline stairs, again likely due to these horizontal line features, but this time spread throughout the image. And finally, the images in the bottom row were misclassified as level ground terrain. Now, similar to the Exonet dataset, we uploaded the Sterinet dataset, including the annotations, to IEEE Dataport and made it publicly available to the research community. And so if you're interested to learn more about the Sterinet system, then please check out our new 2022 ICOR paper. So just to summarize, uh, we designed a preliminary environment recognition system which established the feasibility of using deep learning for this new computer vision application. We also developed Exonet, which still remains one of the largest computer vision datasets for robotic prosthetic legs and exoskeletons. Uh, we also conducted a large-scale comparative analyses of different state-of-the-art convolutional neural networks and our analyses showed that the mobile net v2 network achieves one of the best operational performances. And most recently we developed uh, the Sternet system which is now one of the largest and most accurate automated stair recognition systems for robotic prosthetic legs and exoskeletons. And we deployed the system on a mobile device for onboard real-time inference. I'll now just briefly mention some uh, next steps moving forward and what we're currently pursuing at the University of Toronto. So we're now working on developing a sequential image classification system in order to exploit the temporal dynamics of human locomotion. We're also developing a semi-supervised learning system in order to leverage the massive amounts of unlabeled data that we have in our database. We're also transitioning away from our previous research platform to a fully integrated head-mounted computer vision system, aka smart glasses. And future research will eventually focus on sensor fusion of our smart glasses with onboard mechanical uh, inertial and or neuromuscular sensors for environment adaptive locomotion mode intent recognition. And this is not trivial. In fact, uh, this research by one of my colleagues is one of the first and only examples of using computer vision for online control of a robotic prosthetic leg. And here the team mounted a depth camera on the knee of the prosthetic leg. So I just want to finish up by taking this opportunity to acknowledge my awesome research collaborators, our funding agencies, and the various institutions where this research was conducted. So thank you very much for listening.